hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on the crew with some more vehicles going up the Pikes Peak Rally course. Our first car today, it is the Dodge Challenger. I've driven this car plenty of times in this game. It was my starting vehicle, uh, but I never had it in circuit spec. I bought an Alpha 8C for like, the single player races. So I thought I'd give it a go, having barely, barely driven this car. And I think it looks fantastic in circuit spec. It really, I, th I think it's an incredible looking uh, racing vehicle, this one. It really suits the sort of what the wide body kit stuff. Uh, the wing is, it's a pretty, it's, Pretty sizable wing, not the craziest wing though. Uh, <laughs> that we, I love how that's just an important part of this series, having silly wings. It's, just, it's, it's important. Uh, as far as specs go, as always with this series, the cars are a, le a standard level 40 uh, upgrades, if you like. Uh, so this one has got 624 horsepower, near enough 600 torques, a little bit on the heavier side, 3,130 pounds. Uh, nothing sort of uh, amazing standouts if you like in the uh, in the specs I think it's going to be a pretty good overall car looking at the sort of acceleration top speed grip and braking and so on I think it's going to be quite a good quite a good overall car now the big challenge with the circuit spec cars or the big problem shall we say is very low front splitters and if you see when we oh, <laughs> as you see we get the car stuck here it is a very low front splitter on the front of this car we saw the McLaren uh, pretty much scraped its entire way up the course. The Ferrari 458 struggled as well. Uh, that could cause problems. It could cause problems for circuit cars. So, yeah, just looking at how low... <laughs> Uh-oh, I think the carbon fibre is going to be crying about, well, about two metres. I mean, the initial launch uphill is also quite quite vicious. We're going to give it a go, though. We're going to give the, uh, the Challenger... Uh, Challenger a drive. I do love the interior as well, how it's all carbon fiber but still has the normal Challenger dials. I think that's quite amusing. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got one attempt to drive this car up the up the Pikes Peak course as quickly as possible. And uh, here goes. Let's hope it already. Big, <laughs> big load of sparks fly off the front of the Dodge, but we're not scraped it anymore. I Ooh, okay, it's not quite as planted as I would like. Just that initial first couple of corners. Okay, now it's... Ooh, it's, it, the steering feels a little... I don't know, it feels like almost a little unresponsive at times through these first few corners. Uh, we, we're not scraping on the floor, but uh, okay, we're scraping on the inside bit there. We're not scraping anywhere near as badly as the McLaren, but it really doesn't feel... Not connected to the road is a little bit of a strange thing to be saying, but it kind of feels like that. It's just a very, a very vague. The steering is kind of a suggestion of I may want to go this this particular way. Oh, that was a bit of a bump across there, <laughs> across there. Yeah, the steering's really. <laughs> I've never had a car drive quite like this uh, of the crew. It's a very unresponsive, uh, unresponsive steering. Elsewhere, I mean, this car's got really good traction out of these corners. I am flat out out of that one there. No wheel spin. Absolutely none. That is a big concern with uh, with the circuit cars, is the spinning up of the wheels. The The game is, is a little bit funny with the traction model. When the cars start spinning their wheels, it can get a little bit strange in some of the cars. This one here is perhaps the best I've had of any vehicle. But I'm absolutely flat out everywhere on this. I'm not barely, barely, once we've got it turned in the corner, I'm flat out flat out, apart from me trying to dodge the inside with flat out again. No problems, not even with the bumps, it's not bursting into wheel spin. But the the, the steering lets this car down massively. I, re <laughs> I really wouldn't want to be racing this vehicle. It's just too imprecise of a, of a ste <laughs> steering input. Everything else is very, very good on this car. We've got some decent speed, we've got quite a lot of speed in fact. We've got an awful lot of speed going down here. Uh, how are we over the jump? Uh, dare I? Uh, yeah, I've got the confidence to be flat out over there, and we have smacked the splitter on the floor. The other side of the jump will go down another gear. I don't even. I'm not needing to worry about short shifting uh, in this car. Are there, is there going to be traffic around this corner? Yes, there is, but it is out of the way. Uh, well, I think I did that with the McLaren as well. <laughs> Hugged the inside a little too closely. It's across the line with the Dodge. An in, that's actually an interesting car. <laughs> if that steering was a lot more precise, this would be the best car ever. The problem is it isn't. Everything else is really good. 
traction's fantastic, uh, the brakes are good, but the, <laughs> the actual cornering grip, once you've got it right, is very nice as well. It's just a bit weird. Uh, it doesn't quite drive as nice as it looks, which is a slight disappointment, because it looks really, really cool. So I find it slightly harder to recommend this car, but it did get up the mountain without too many dramas. It didn't scrape the front of the car, which is amazing, considering how low that... <laughs> So the camera's not very good at showing it, but how low that, that splitter is. But we didn't scrape it the uh, entire way up the mountain, which is always which is always useful. Up next, we have got the BMW M5, perhaps the least exciting of looking cars. In all honesty, there is no ludicrous wing, there is no ludicrous diffuser, or any other silly bits for this car. Uh, I had a look. I, I went to the tuning shop for it. It's a performance spec vehicle, this one. And there is just, I think you can have a slight, the BMW, the the, the, the racing stripe thing, I think you can have possibly that. The, this, the, the one by the M5 badge, that you can have, I think, on the front bumper and rear. It's just, there's not particularly exciting parts for the... <laughs> for this car. It doesn't mean though that it's not going to be fast when we come to uh, to drive it up the mountain. As far as the uh, specifications go, 726 horsepower, 650 torques, near enough, but it is a heavy car. Uh, that's actually pretty, that's not that far off the Ford Raptor that we had race out. I think the Ford Raptor was 4,100, this is 3,800 pretty much. It's not far, not far off a Raptor, and a Raptor is a huge truck. Um, it's the most powerful car we have here today as well uh, on, on this. It could do quite well. I, I'm not 100% sure. We may be quite slidey. We may be quite slidey uh, on the way up the hill. Uh, we don't yeah we don't have we don't have the slick tires the nice race tires we could have we could have wheel spin problems we shouldn't be scraping the front of the car though I would not <laughs> I mean okay yes it is kind of low but we don't have that the huge diffusers we should be all right on the uh, on on the scraping front it's the wheel spinning and sliding front that's where we may be losing time but uh, we're going to uh, give it a go and see oopsie that's not the handbrake button apparently I've just I've just forgotten handbrake. Uh, <laughs> In the two seconds it took me to... Uh, right, there we go. Alright, we're good. I'd, honestly, I know controls of games. And uh, we are off with the BMW. There is a lot more wheel spin off the, <laughs> the start line than most of the cars. But once we get going, it, considering this is a 700 horsepower M5, once we get going, then we can we, we do actually get some grip. And we're already... Ah, oh, much nicer steering. Much nicer steering through those first couple of corners than the Dodge. It was a lot more, you know, I can put the car exactly where I want it. Uh, how do we fare through these next, ooh, okay, I've got a, got a little bit on the bumps, just a little bit on the bumps on the uh, on the middle of the corner there, just got it slightly wrong, and then through this next one, ooh, this is actually really, <laughs> this isn't what at all what I expected it to be like. A 700 horsepower M5, I expect it to be sliding everywhere, oi, there we go. We just get a kick of oversteer when we're really hammering it. But it's actually very nice. Another car that is being surprisingly... Oh, I turned. That was my fault on that one. I turned into the corner <laughs> a little bit too soon. But uh, no, this has got an awful, awful lot of grip. It will slide. It will get oversteery. But it's not the same... It's not the same wheel spinning over the bumps. It's I can chuck it around these corners and get the back end of the car sliding. Uh, but it's not, it's not spinning the wheels up over the bumps. Uh, again, I'm being really... <laughs> really aggressive with the throttle with this car. I'm not even bothering with the short shifting. I don't need to worry about it. The BMW is okay. It, it will, again, there's just a tiny burst of wheel spin you can, you can hear on the acceleration. But it's nowhere near as bad. I mean, the Ford Raptor we had last week was struggling a lot more. The Shelby GT500 was, was wheel spinning its way uh, through the course. But this, this has got decent, decent grip. It's got decent speed as well. How are we under braking? We're good under braking, we're good through the corners, just about. I may have clipped the inside there just a little bit and lost a bit of momentum. How fast do we go down here? Not far off the circuit car, to be honest. Uh, most of the vehicles are hitting around 150, 160. BMW is pretty quick as well. 
As I, it, I did say it was a little bit of a heavier car. It doesn't feel it to drive, though. It feels really nice. It's got loads of grip through these corners. Oh, got a little bit of a twitch on through that one, though. Got to be a little bit careful with some of the bumps. There's a pickup on the exit of that corner there. I can even run the grass there, and it doesn't fling the car up towards the sky. It's across the line for the BMW. Now, actually, one of the biggest surprises I've had, beside me liking a Mini, I think this could be the second most surprising car I've driven on the crew. Uh, see, it's, a <laughs> it's a really very nice vehicle to drive. It's very easy to drive. It's not exciting to look at as such. I mean, I don't mind the M5, nothing wrong with them, but you can't have the same ludicrous, crazy body kits on this particular car. But it is a very nice one to drive. It's a very safe car to drive on its way, even with all of this power. It was very, very easy to get it up the mountain without any problems. I don't think it I don't think it actually spun the wheels up over a bump once. I did get it sliding a little bit out of the corners. But you get a huge amount of grip from the M5. And we even ran the grass a couple of times and it didn't throw the car skywards. So that's quite useful. That's that's quite useful on this game in general. Yeah, that M5 is not at all what I expected from it, but a very nice, easy to drive car up the other uh, Pikes Peak course. Our third and final vehicle for today is the Ford Focus RS in a performance spec. It is a very angry looking car from the front. I can't quite show you well enough with the camera. If we see it, no, the camera doesn't quite go low. It's got a very angry, uh, <laughs> angry front bumper. It is definitely the most amusing of the of the cars. We've got a, I think it's the Rally wing on the back. It's still a fairly, a fairly ridiculous wing they have on the back. Of these focuses. No other car has that sort of wig, I don't think. Uh, and then we've got some rear arrowy bits and then there's a diffuser and we've got a fancy side skirt thing going on uh yeah we've got a, a, a fairly crazy a crazy looking vehicle this is also a, a four-wheel drive car the first four-wheel drive vehicle of the uh, of the day which could be quite useful when we come to uh, to racing up the hill although the other cars haven't had too much problems with the with the whole traction front as far as statistics go on this car it's not looking hugely good only 462 horsepower, probably the lowest powered car we've had. Uh, I think of, of, of all of them going up this, or maybe the Mini, other than the Mini, uh, is the lowest powered car. 484 torques, which is not too bad. That's about, I think it's about the same amount as the Ferrari 458. So there you go. <laughs> not very often you say that about a Focus. Uh, and we are a little bit on the heavier side, 2,900 pounds. I mean, it's not massively heavy, but considering we haven't got the power or the torque of the other cars, and we are still quite heavy, it could struggle up the hill, but then maybe the, the, the four-wheel drive, uh, maybe the grip will make up for it. Who knows? We will, uh, we will find out. I am slightly concerned about the splitter now, looking at how low that is to the floor and how far it sticks out from the front bumper. Could be an issue, maybe, but then I thought that about the Challengers, and the Challenger was absolutely fine. Uh, let's see if I shot that a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, it could be a surprise package, this car. I think it'll be quite nice to drive. But it uh, may not be quite as quick as some of the other vehicles. Ooh, I, I hate the, the, the left and right buttons on the Xbox One controllers. Terrible. Uh, anyway, we are off. Fire the car at the Pikes Peak Mountain, and we will see how it goes. We didn't even scrape on the first sort of little incline. Well, that's reassuring for this run. I think the focus may be okay with the splitter. How about everything else on the car? How do we, how do we drive? Well, the handling, it's certainly a lot more responsive than the Dodges, which is, to be fair, I think that's about the worst steering I've had in a car, uh, in all honesty. The, the traction off the line, we had absolutely no wheel spin, and then we are very, very, very quick through there, or it feels very quick. I'm not sure if we are actually going um, as quick as some of the other cars. I'm just chucking this thing into the corners. There is endless amounts of, maybe not endless, there is a lot of grip in this car. We'll, we'll chuck it down a gear. Uh, as, I, as, as I predicted, this is an absolutely lovely car to drive already. I'm already liking the Focus. It is absolutely fantastic to drive up this course. We, <laughs> you can just throw it around and it really doesn't care. There is so much grip and being four-wheel drive. You, you can just chuck it at the corners. And again, we'll have a, a, a dab on the brakes, a downshift, and we're fine. Easy, easy around. <laughs> This course, <laughs> it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Mini. It's kind of a bit like driving the Mini, only this one's this has got more power. Imagine a, a, like a high-spec Mini would kind of be a similar thing to drive. There's just so much, so much grip 
throw it around the corner, we may have got a fox slightly. I do apologise. It was, it's fine. You can't hit the animals in here, so it's all good. Uh, again, we're coming into that corner absolutely flat. <laughs> absolutely flat out. Uh, you could take so much speed through these corners in the Focus. You can get away with so much in this car. Uh, there is, I've had not, not spun the wheels at once, I don't think. Not even, even off the line, uh, through any of the bumps, out of the corners. I can be a moron. You're not going to spin the wheels. It's not going to have any problems with that kind of thing. We're not using Nitro on these runs. Uh, that may cause it to spin the wheels, but uh, <laughs> just normal driving, it's just, it's just not going to. It doesn't have the speed of the other cars. We're only 145 over the crest there. Uh, well, we did scrape the splitter on the floor that time, uh, but uh, it doesn't have the same speed. It probably doesn't have the same acceleration as the other cars. It's just not got the power, and it's a little bit... Uh, a little bit heavy. I mean, if this was 500 pounds lighter with this power, it would probably make up for it. But uh, yeah, it doesn't quite have the acceleration or the top speed of the other vehicles. But it's probably one of the nicest cars to drive as we cross the line. Uh, it's just so easy to drive this car. I mean, I, the BMW was nice and everything. Um, and I still say the BMW is more of a surprise for being that nice than, than this is a surprise for being a good car. But this is a really a very good car. For, if you're just wanting to learn driving driving on this game, this is a fantastic car for just throwing around because there is endless, endless amounts of grip. I do like this Focus. It's a very, very nice car to drive up that particular mountain. Yeah, it lacks a little bit of power, lacks a little bit of acceleration, but it makes up for it by you being able to be absolutely flat out everywhere. It's, uh, yeah, it's a very, very nice car, the, uh, the Focus. On to the times, and well, it is all really rather close. Today, 0.3 of a second covers three, these three cars. I was quite surprised as well when I came to, uh, to do the timing. The Ford Focus, though, does go quickest with a 228.6. That's not that far off the McLaren race car. That's a good time from the Focus, despite the fact it lacked some power and lacked a bit of acceleration and top speed. Because it has so much grip and such good handling, it kind of makes up for it. The M5 uh, goes just fractionally slower than the Focus. Yeah, a surprisingly good overall car, that M5. And despite the uh, rather dodgy steering, dodgy handling of the Challenger, it only goes 0.1 of a second slower than the M5 with a 228.8. And it's 0.1 of a second faster than the Raptor. So it just beats out a big truck. Yeah, I thought the Challenger may, be, may struggle a little bit more. Yes, it is a circuit car, and yes, it is probably technically you know, faster than, than, the other, than the other specification of cars, if you like. But uh, yeah, it, it did fairly well, considering such, such strange steering on that car. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.